Welcome to The Advocate, the program that keeps you educated and informed on current events around you. I'll be talking about the we thinking, the only way to a secure and greater Nigeria. We'll be talking about mediocrity in Nigerian society. Sholakwe Azazi will be talking about what is autism. As usual, expect interesting conversations that will keep you enlightened. We'll be back just after the break. Stay with us. The way thinking, the only way to a secure and greater Nigeria. Today, I want to talk about the importance of we mentality, how it can lead to a more secure and prosperous Nigeria. There's a story about a father who took his son to visit a poor village to show him how people live. The experience was eye-opening for the son, as he saw firsthand the struggles that many people face every day. Upon their return home, the father asked his son what he had learned from the trip. The son's response was unexpected. Rather than focusing on the poverty and lack of material possessions that he had seen, he instead highlighted the wealth of love, compassion, friendship that had witnessed that he had witnessed rather in the village. The son's words were powerful reminder that true wealth lies not in material possessions but in the values and the relationship that we hold there. This story has stayed with me throughout my life and has taught me the importance of embracing a we mentality. It's about prioritizing compassion, respect, collaboration in all that we do. As Nigerians, we have seen firsthand the benefit of working together towards a common goal. The potential we have as a nation when we come together. So I urge us all to embrace a win mentality in our daily lives and in our efforts to build a better Nigeria, let's work towards a more secure, prosperous, and connected Nigeria for all of its citizens and prioritize the values that truly make us rich. Fellow advocates, what can you say to this? Well, I like the, um, the fact that um, when the child was asked to say what he learned and he was able to point out um, all the other things that in his childlike mind. And sometimes we, that's what I see missing in the society. We have um, prioritized a lot on material things, so much so that it has clouded our mentality. You know, before we used to say the village system when all the children were raised in that, you know, communal setting. Now, everything is just concrete jungle. Everybody is, um, is all about me, the mentality of me, myself, and I. And because of that, we're not even looking out for the fellow human beings anymore. We are so selfish in our interests that we don't take time out to enjoy that little thing that we don't even have to buy with money, you know, the love the acceptance, the brotherhood, hmm. you know. Hmm. That's, sure. that's, that's what do you say to that? Well, unfortunately, um, I will say this. This is one of the uh, disadvantages that modernization has brought to us. Hmm. You know, when we were still, the life was still very easy when, you know, in the rural areas, villages, even as a as a young child, you have so many adults. I mean, looking after you, you have so many fathers, so many mothers, um, and I mean, so many people you can call your own father, your own mother, because they see everyone as a unit. 
the organization has, has really disintegrated us. Now everybody wants to live the, the lives of their own. Everybody wants to amass enough wealth, enough resources to, their, to themselves. Um, that is need the fact that we are for each other. And if you bring that to a Nigeria uh, concept, you understand that the only area that you see that we have a few times come together is in sports. In other areas, when it comes to politics, you see division here and there along ethnic, religious lines. You see that we are not able to come together to fight those that really have held the country on the jugular. So the only area we have come together, and that has shown that if you really want to take a cue from that, is the sports. If you take a cue from what we are able to gain from sports, we will be able to achieve more. You see how it's coming together when Nigeria is playing, either basketball or either football, which is the greatest sport that we follow in this country. So that real mentality is really not there yet. And we really need to begin to see ourselves as one because we know there is strength in unity. Mm. Okay. I also want us to look at it from this perspective where uh, we have adults today, the husband and the wife, chasing their dreams of career, go out probably in Lagos, for example, 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning and come back late as, as 10. You know, it's that compassion of sharing of love with the children, understanding, you know, sharing culture and what have you. Can we also say uh, in that aspect, they are thinking about themselves, not about the immediate environment and the effect of them thinking about themselves and not catering and not catering for their children, right? And then we now look at the effect where you see in uh, uh, occultic groups, you know, you, you find out that a lot of people who are really high class in their they are, they are children of rich kids, well to do. You know, and all those bad acts that we, we do. You know, parenting has become another thing entirely. Can we also look at it from that angle? Of course. Unfortunately, again, uh, while as, even at home, you want to see that at least as a family, the husband and the wife should be in one accord at the home front, uh, ensuring that the kids are okay. But in doing this, they also fall apart. The husband is not always at home, the wife is not always at home, the kids are always on their own. So the we factor, because uh, what time do they really have to look mm. at the, the progress that the children are making in education, in their sporting activity, the skills? And that's why you see kids growing up with a lot of talents untapped, because the parents are not always around to be able to <laughs> see... To guide them. To guide them and see that, okay, you know, when you want the kind of educational system that we run is such that most of the schools, private schools, don't have sporting activity, uh, facilities. Then the only time you do, as parents, you need to dedicate some other resources and time at the weekend to monitor the, I mean, help them groom their skills and all of that. Mm. But everybody is on their own. Mm. You know, on weekends, even when you're at home, you want to stay in a place where you want to rest because, you know, on Monday again, the husband and Bosnia start again. So mm, that's, that's, that's funny. What can you say about the we mentality in regards to security? Because today I can see that um, everybody wants to have their own uh, private security firm, you know, their own policing, once they can pay. And, you know, going up, I, I remember that you always have, you know, from one house to other, when any stranger enters the community, we already know this person is not part of us because he doesn't go with us. Where are you from? We want to inquire that, what, what do you come here to do? You know, we feel secure around ourselves, and that is obtainable as of today in villages. But in the cities, we, are, we, we shout of insecurity and stuff like that. But can we say, because we think as an individual, I want to just protect ourselves, I don't care about the people within us or what? What can you say about that in relation to security, insecurity challenges that we are facing in the country? Okay, so um, I think I'll just take it one at a time because it's a very big, you know, I'll unbox it. So first and foremost, um, when we were growing up, it was uh, more um, relaxed in the sense that um, we had, like um, you said, we had 
our uncles and aunties and everybody else watching out for us. But when you look at it now, you have mom, dad, and children. It's a unit now. The extended part of that communal living has fallen off. And so when I remember when I was growing up, my parents have gone to work, but I have one auntie or the other that is watching out for me that is serving as my parents in the house. And because they are there, you know, there's that, um, there's someone else that would, you know, make sure that they carry out the responsibility of parenting and making sure that all that I need to do to thrive is there. Mm. But nowadays, you don't see it anymore. The parents have to survive. The, the economic situation of when we were younger and what is in reality now is totally different. And for them to survive, they have to go out there and hustle. Hmm. And when they go out there to hustle, it's, it's, it's a given. You are tired because you've gone through the traffic, you've gone through all of it. You're only human. You come back home, you want to rest. To start to focus and nurture all those other things, it starts to affect your mental health. And that's why you will see them lashing out and all of that. Then you come to security. Um, it's still the same concept. We had that communal living when we were younger. So you can always spot who is not our member. Mm. You didn't need a security firm. On in, you didn't need all those people because all you needed was the guard at the end of the streets. In fact, when you, when you come and then your parents, they already know the person is telling them as they're driving in that, oh, she's on the third street. Because we knew ourselves. There was that space to play, space to move around and all of that. But we don't have that anymore. Because everywhere, like I said, it's a concrete jungle. Everywhere you turn to, you turn, you see a space that is a playground before. You turn tomorrow, it's been turned into a building complex. So when you think about that, today you know your neighbor. Tomorrow there's nobody to, because it's already, I mean, what can you say? So that means... To, to cap it up, I think we'll also be looking at it from the angle of business because today we, we have more of capitalists than, you know, socialists in, in Nigerian business space. And, you know, I was, I was actually watching the Nigerian Titan and I saw a beautiful presentation of a man who is seeking an investment funding to do rice processing. He has started and he did his analysis and said, for every bag of rice, it can generate as much as 2,000 naira as profit. And it's from this 2,000 naira that goes after removing all expenses. That's a net profit. But the investor said, that's too small. And I looked. 2,000 naira, about how many tons of bags of rice? And it's too small. Is that no greediness? You know? And when you now look at it into banking sector as well, you see debt. You see high rate debt financing right now, where you see people giving, you say, I need assistance to boost my business. They are giving me interest per annum as much as 120%, as much as 72%. Is that not greediness? Is that not just taking, you know, greed to say, it's just about me. I don't care how you want to make this money. I just need this percentage at the end of the day. And how do we want to grow as, an, as a country, as an individual? when everybody are just thinking about them, them and them. I think what we have now also touched on and why it seems we are tilting towards this individualism is because of the way we vent for ourselves in this country. Virtually, you are, I used to say, you are your own government. <laughs> you need to build your own house, get your own water, power your, get your own power supply take your kids to school. I mean, you, when, when you begin to do that, you, the, the tendency is that you begin to think all about yourself. No, see, I want no, myself, sister. my wife, my kids to be fine. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? So the government has to be involved in so many other things for us. Why do I need to be the one to, to cover out like 15, 20 million dollars? Well, people are house? the government. We are the government. We have, we, no, now, in this case, we have become individual governments. <laughs> That is what, uh, so from the federal government, the state government, the local government, you also have individual governments. Hmm. <laughs> so what do you have to say to that? Well, I agree with what you're saying because by the time you have to sort out all those other little, little pockets, at the end of the day, you're not thinking about everyone in national kick anymore because you're thinking that 
I have coughed out so much. What's in it for me? Mm. Mm. I have done X, Y, and Z. I've become my own security man, my own this, my own that. So please, I need to maximize all that is there for me. And so there's no room to be able to say to my neighbor that, ah, sorry, do you want me to extend this uh, water that I'm getting now? Do you want me to extend it? You know, there's no room for that because I just want to say it's for me, yeah. please. Th thank you so much. Thank you so much. Just before we go, I will want to advocate that we are the government. All these things we know, we just need to take a step, you know, to say, let us build a system. And we can begin from private sector to show example and try to adopt it into the public sector. We have seen it happen in FinTech, trying to play the role of finance mm. and teaching the banks on a better way to make things work right. And it's becoming a policy and becoming a government entity. I think as an individual, we should start as a private entity to start thinking about we, formalizing it, and taking it to the government. Shulakwe Azaze is next after the break. Do stay with us.